Okay, this is the last video in chapter two, and they kind of combine multiplying and dividing rational numbers together into section 2.4. So it's pages 64 to 69 in the book. There's more examples there if you need it. Our target for this section or this video is to multiply and divide rational numbers. So that could be fractions, it could be decimals, it could be integers, and they could be positive or negative. So we're putting it all together. So here we go. The first examples are with multiplying decimals, and it may have been a while since we've done this. Before we actually set up the problem, let's just go through, because the new thing now is that we're going to have some negatives involved. So let's go through and answer each of these, whether they should the answer should be positive or negative. In the first one, if I have a negative times a positive, signs are different, I know overall my answer is going to be negative. In the next one, I have a negative times a negative, so overall my answer is going to be a positive. And in the last one, I have a positive times a negative. One of each, the signs are different. My answer is going to be negative. That's going to be important because after I get done actually doing the multiplication, I need to make sure I keep the right sign for my final answer. So let's set up. The first one is just going to be, you're just going to multiply the decimals like normal. 2.5 times 3.6. So if you have a hard time remembering how to just do the multiplication, make sure you listen to all the steps as we go through it together. So I'm going to change colors because I'm going to start here with the 6 times 5. That gives me 30. And then the 6 times the 2. That gives me 12. And I have to add those 3. So 13, 14, 15. Okay. Then remember we're going to multiply the 3 next and multiply it by the 5 and the 2. But I have to, since uh, the 3 is moved over, one decimal place over, I put a placeholder in. Now I do 3 times 5. Make sure I bring up the 1. And then 3 times 2. That's 6 plus the 1 here makes 7. And then there's a little bit of work to get to our final answer. These have to be added together, and i got to get my decimal place in the right spot. So go ahead and add. That would be 0. These would make 10. So carry the 1, and then 7, 8, and 9. But my answer is not 900. i got to look back up at the original problem. In this problem, I had the decimal place was in 1, moved over 1, and moved over 1. So that's a total of 2. So I have to move my decimal place and my final answer over 2 spots, and I get 9 for an answer. But remember up here, we said that it had to be negative. Um, so negative 9. Okay, we're going to set the next ones up and then pause and work them out. You've got to do the practice of, of this multiplication out because there are some of these on the test and I don't want you to forget how to do them. So here we already said uh, the answer was going to be positive. I'll just set it up. 6.3 times 0 0.6. Okay, go ahead, do that multiplication and set up the last one as well. And then we'll um, talk it through and check our answers. So pause now. Okay, I wanted to um, go through the steps together. So as part of checking it, let's make sure this is how you did it. 6 times 3 is 18. 6 times 6 is 36, but plus 1. Placeholder, now I'm going on to this 0, right? Multiplying the 0 times everything is just going to be 0. So that's it. Nothing to add up. I just have to move my decimal place over 2 places. So I should get 3.78. And we said it was a positive answer, positive 3.78. Okay, let's try setting up the next one. 1 1.8 times a negative 5.1. But we already know our answer is going to be negative at the end. That takes care of that part for us. So just do the multiplication. So pause it, try it, and then we'll come back and check together. All right, if you're ready to check, 1 times 8 is 8. 1 times 1 is 1. Placeholder. Now I'm doing 5 times the 8 is 40. Carry the 4. 5 times 1 is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. got to add those 4 on. So I get this. Add them up. And I had 1, 2 places to move over. So 9.18. And we said the answer was going to be a negative. Okay. 
please make sure this is what it has in your packet. Um, you may have a copy where these are incorrect, so please fix it in your packet and make sure you do these problems. Cross out what's there if it's not the same as this. So now multiplying fractions. Again, let's think through the answers um, or just if it should be positive or negative first so we make sure we get the sign right. A negative times a positive is going to be a negative answer. And a negative times a positive is going to be a negative answer. So in both of these, I'm just going to multiply the fractions, but make sure I make my answer negative. So when we multiply fractions, we do want to get rid of any mixed numbers like this. So multiply these, 56 plus another 7. So it looks like I get 63 eighths. And this one's good to go. I can just bring it down. Now, we took care of the sign already, so you don't have to really bring the sign down as long as you always go back and check that you put it on your final answer. All right, looks like I can reduce or simplify a few things. Four would go into both of these. Four goes into two, sorry, not four, two. Two goes into both of those. Two goes into two once. Two goes into eight four times. And then I can also uh, reduce these guys. It looks like three would go into both of these. Three goes into three once. 3 goes into 63 21 times, and that's probably everything. So I get 21 over 4, or you could change it into a mixed number. So 4 fits into 21 5 times with 1 left over, but I said my answer had to be negative. Okay, you can try the next one. Turn it into an improper fraction if you need to. Make sure you keep track of the sign on your final answer. Go ahead and try it, and then we'll come back and check. So I converted this to an improper fraction. I did find that uh, I could reduce or simplify those numbers. When I multiplied across the top, multiplied across the bottom, I got 25 eighths, and I can change that into 3 and 1 eighth, but my final answer needed to be negative. Okay, next one, dividing decimals. So these can be fun. We're just going to do some more long division. Again, I would make sure that we double check the sign on our answer. So a negative divided by a positive, it's going to be a negative final answer. So when I set these up, 8.6 divided by 2.2. Okay, I want to make this a whole number. So I'm going to move the decimal place over 1, so I have 22, and move the decimal place over 1 and put it up there for my answer. So I'm doing 86 divided by 22. Well, 22 fits into 86. You're probably going to have to guess and check it. Does it fit in 3? Let's see, 3 times would be 66. Yeah, and it wouldn't fit in one more time. So I know I have to start here with 3. 3 times 22 is 66. Subtract, I get 20. I got to keep going, so bring down a 0, 200. So how many times does 22 go into 200? Well, you're thinking probably about 10, but if I did 10, that would be 220. That's too big, so it must be 9. And if you need to go over here and do it, 22 times 9, 9 times 2, 18, 18, 19, yeah, 198. That's good. I couldn't fit it in one whole more time. So do your subtraction, we get 2. Bring down a 0, 20. Well, 22 can't fit into 20, so I have to put a 0 there. And since I got a 0, I'm subtracting, which means I still have the 20 left. Bring down another 0. Oh, we got 200 again. Right there, by having this 200, I can see that it's going to be the same as there. So I'm going to keep having the same pattern from here on out. It's going to keep being 9, 0, 9, 0. So I can stop. Negative 8.6 divided by 2.2 is a final answer of, we said it had to be negative, 3.90 repeating. Okay, try this next one. Let's get it set up together, uh, and then you can finish the long division. 1.03075 divided by 0 0.25. They're both negative in this case, so my final answer is going to be a positive. Okay. Again, we want to move the decimal place over 2, move the decimal place over 2, put it up in your answer. Now I'm looking at how many times does 25 go into 103. Well, 25, 50, 75, 100, that's close enough. It goes in 4, 4 times, which would be 100. 
oops, I was supposed to let you pause and finish it out. So pause, finish your long division, and then let's see what we get. It looks like a big, ugly, nasty problem, but go ahead and finish the long division. It actually works out okay. And we come up with 4.123, and we said the answer was positive. I went all the way until I got a remainder of zero. Okay, the last kind of problem. Okay, I had a technical difficulty, but we're back. So the next kind of problem is dividing fractions. So again, let's think through what the sign should be so we don't mess that part up with the negatives. In the first one, a negative divided by a negative is going to give us a positive answer. So we just have to make sure our answer in the end is positive. And in number two, a positive divided by a negative. I have different signs, so I know I'm going to get a negative final answer. Now we just have to set up the division. So, um, in the division problems, we don't have to have common denominators. Let's just write out the problem. And remember, when I do division, the trick is actually to change it to multiplication and to flip that guy to its reciprocal. So now I'm doing negative 6 fifths times negative 2 over 1. I would look for anything that cross cancels or reduces. I don't see anything. So go ahead and multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. We said our final answer was positive, and I can leave it like this or turn it into a mixed number. So what, 2 and 2 fifths? Okay, final one. Um, go ahead, you try it. Careful here with that mixed number. Think about what you need to do with that first. Just do the division of the fractions, and then we said our final answer needed to be a negative. So I'll let you set it up and do it. Pause, and then we'll check. So here I changed this to an improper fraction. We can just do the problem with the fractions and just make sure our answer is negative at the end. So one third, I had to switch it to multiplication, flip the second guy over, so I have the reciprocal, multiply by the reciprocal. Um, I noticed right here that these threes could be reduced, so that makes my numbers a little bit easier. Multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and then make sure your answer is negative, negative one eighth. So that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching.